Hello guys and welcome to the Battle for Middle Earth 2 patch 1.09 version 2.0. If you don't know what's happening, Battle for Middle Earth 2 got a recent update and it is not a small one guys, trust me on that one. Uh, first thing first, I mean the most important thing first, out of sync problem is gone. That's not gonna happen anymore. If you don't know what that means, uh, before in Battle for Middle Earth 2, there was a chance that you get kicked out of the game after 15 to 20 minutes and they fixed this problem, which is huge by the way. On top of that, we're gonna have new balance, we're gonna have new animations for the summons, for the heroes, new abilities for the heroes. Indeed, there was a video a couple of weeks ago on this channel, you know, showing the ring heroes Galadriel and Sauron. Uh, the abilities of these heroes were looking amazing. And first of all, obviously, you need to download Battle for Middle Earth 2. Link for that is gonna be in the video description down below. Then you're gonna go on this website. Also, this website is going to be in the description down below. You click on the download patch 1.09 version 2.0, uh, which is going to be a RAR file. You need to extract this one, then it's going to turn into the BFME 2 patch switcher. Let's open this one. As for permission, by the way. And this is how it looks like, guys. So we're going to have here, you can you know enable the new patch and you have two different options. You can you have a zoom out into the in, inside the patch switcher, which is amazing. Because I remember many of you guys were asking me all the time, how can I zoom out more? Now, this is the answer, guys. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, the higher one, 560. Beautiful. You can also enable or disable the Fortress Floors. I'm going to enable this one. And then we're going to actually open Battle for Middle Earth 2 in the HD edition. Let's get it started. I'm actually excited about this one, guys. I think it's going to be amazing. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more BFME 2 content in the future. We can also try to organize some tournaments for this game, for the new patch at least. Uh, I don't have too much knowledge about the changes in terms of balance, but I can learn for you guys. Beautiful, so let's go solo play, skirmish, and let's take a look into the Man of the West faction, just why not? Let's get it started. Beautiful. Alrighty, so this is the zoom out by the way. It looks pretty nice to me guys. We can also zoom in obviously. Uh, zooming in is not possible anymore. I can't zoom in for some reason. Ah, there it is. Okay, something was wrong. We have two builders. Uh, look at the animations of the farm for example. The farm is looking nice. It looks similar to the Age of the Ring, um, which is by the way beyond standards in terms of graphics. And this is how our building looks like now in the new patch. PowerPoint abilities wise, it is, you know, not changed at all. We have almost the same abilities now for the Man of the West faction. Heal, Rallying Call, uh, but the names are different. Human Wood, uh, Rallying Call is the same. Heal, we have the Lone Tower, we have the Arrow Volley, we have uh, Tom Bomber Deal, we have the Hobbit Allies, Donadan Allies, uh, Cloud Break, Rohan Allies, Army of the Dead, and then Earthquake. Uh, Human Wood, it's not the same like in. Uh, like in Rise of the Witch King, because Man of the West doesn't have the human wood, like in BFME 2. Uh, Hero-wise, we can actually take a look into that. The heroes are the same for the Man of the West faction. We have Boromir, Theodin, Faramir, Eomer, Eowyn, Aragorn, and then last but not least, Gandalf himself. Beautiful. We can also take a look into the units, just why not. And we can actually recruit, for example, Aragorn. Let's make one more farm so we are not running out of resources. By the way, if you are running into any troubles by trying to download a new patch, let me know in the comment section down below. You can also join the Discord, which is going to be the best place to ask for help. And you can also get to know other Battle for Middle Earth players, guys. And we have over 1000 members in Discord already. And there is always someone online. <laughs> Alright, All right. Uh, the barracks is looking nice. I like the building stuff here. Looks pretty dope to me. And we're gonna recruit some of the Gondor soldiers, just why not? Let's make more farms, because money is nice to have. Not only in the game, but also in real life. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna wait for Aragorn, he should be joining the battlefield very soon. And Aragorn has arrived, the king of Men of the West, guys. So we have the battle senses, nothing changed in terms of that one. The same abilities, Blade Master, Leadership, uh, LN Deal. But Leadership system is gonna be different now. Like you have now, as you can see, high tier hero. Like you have different types of heroes. Like for example, Theorin is gonna be a low level hero because he's pretty cheap, right? 
Aragon on the other side is a hero you need to invest 3000 resources to recruit and obviously his leadership is going to be different. So you can stack the leadership from Aragorn and Theoden if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not sure yet. Because as mentioned at the beginning of the game or video, uh, I don't have too much knowledge about the balance changes just yet. I know that they changed the stacking system of leadership. Aragorn, by the way, hitting like an absolute track. I'm actually excited about his damage against the Leia. Okay, against the Leia, he's not dealing that much damage, but he's leveling up. And that's one of the things what I like about Battle for Middle Earth 2 more. The heroes are leveling up in the early levels at least. Like that makes Gandalf, for example, much more useful in Battle for Middle Earth 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, even though he's more expensive here. Because 5000. But he's worth every single penny. Aragorn should hit level 3 after this one, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. And by the way, leadership, uh, I mean the buffs are also different. You can see the buff is now gonna give you damage and experience, not armor, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. And Aragorn hitting actually level 4 after one creep. That's pretty dope. Now we have unlocked the leadership and the Blade Master. Blade Master is gonna increase the damage and armor of Aragorn for, you know, each 50%. Not gonna only make him deal more damage, but he's also gonna become more tanky. That's how the soldiers are looking like. They look nice, they have the shields, the graphics are a little bit a little bit different. The shield wall is gonna be um, enabled um, after purchasing the Vanakiri upgrade, which is available with level 1. It only costs 250, so nothing too crazy. You can then also upgrade the Vanakiri upgrade on the soldiers to get them level 2. Okay, let's see the damage from Aragorn with Blade Master. Yeah, he's dealing way more damage obviously. I'm actually excited about the level he's gonna gain after being done with the creep here. Maybe he will hit level 5. Maybe. He's two-shotting the layer. Now you can see yourself, right? The experience he's gaining after hitting level 4 is obviously much less uh, than he was able to get from level 1 to level 4 with one creep only. That is nice because some heroes, they have, you know, no impact on the game in the early levels, like, like Gandalf for example. Because you have literally one ability you can use, the Wizard Blast, he's gonna be on food, it's kind of the Grey. But then getting him to level 4 is gonna make him, you know, able to get on his horse, Shadow Fax. And he will have much more impact, which is, by the way, reasonable because he costs 5000 resources at the end of the day. So let's take a look into the stable as well, and maybe into the Archer range as well. We can also recruit some of the, uh, some of the Tower Guards, just why not. And the change here is gonna be also to the ring heroes. Indeed, you know, there is a video about Sauron and Galadriel on this channel. The animations are looking dope to me. And, you know, you can see there is like a reskin of every single building in the new patch. The maps got uh, redesigned as well, most of them at least. They will be working on more stuff for this patch. Our guards are looking like this. If the porcupine formation, 60% increased armor against calf, it's gonna be very useful. Um, yeah, they look pretty nice to me. I mean, obviously, we are also using the Battle for Middle Earth 2 HD edition, if you don't know. Okay, Archer range is already up on the field. We can recruit some of the Archers and then the Rangers. Just why not? Let's make one Gondor Knight, get the stable to level 2, so we can recruit some of the Rohirrim. Let's make more farms. Money, money, money. In the meantime, we can also recruit a hero like, you know, Theodin. I think that's gonna be nice because now we can take a look into the leadership system because you can see yourself here Aragorn has the high tier hero leadership which means uh, damage armor only 25% each and they also level up 50% faster the nervy allied units around Aragorn. Let's take a look into the leadership from uh, Theorin, the king of Rohan. Okay, the Gondor Knights are on the field now. Uh, they look like this. Let's recruit some rangers and Gondor archers as well. Should be just careful with our command points to not run out of command points. Gondor Knights are looking like this, guys. Pretty nice. Okay, let's make more farms to increase our command points so we can make more units. Uh, professional, by the way. Theoden has arrived. And Theoden uh, can get mounted and dismounted. Uh, he doesn't have leadership with level 1, unlike in uh, Rise of the Witch King. He's coming out of the base or fortress on horse. That's how Theoden looks like. Looks pretty nice to me. Uh, he looks almost the same way in all Battle for Middle Earth games, pretty much. Leadership, you can see. Um, that's just, you know, they don't have the armor anymore. And you can see the leadership is a little bit weaker. So first of all, he's missing uh, very important stuff, the armor. 
and he's also leveling up 25% faster. Uh, you can see resistant damage inspiring. This one is a uh, resistant high tier hero. And then we can also take a look maybe into the into something like Gunsalf. But first of all, we need to get more resources. And we can also, just for the video here, uh, build a marketplace. I would love to see the animation of the Grand Harvest on these farms, just why not? Uh, Rohirrim are gonna be the next. Rangers are looking like this. And that's how the Gondor Archers are looking like. They have also aggressive stands, hold ground stands, obviously. You can change with your um, keyboard. D is for aggressive stands, G for hold ground. And I think F for standards, yes. They're building up a marketplace now. Uh, the other builder is building up another farm, just why not? I can click that, okay. There we go. Uh, something is wrong there. Okay, let's build one more farm, just why not? Now we have a decent amount of resource income, which should be kind of empowered with the with the marketplace once we have it on the field. Rohirrim are looking like this. Rohirrim, unlike the Gondor knights, are also able to switch between bow and sword. Which makes them more useful in some, you know, some certain situations, especially against pikemen. Because you can also, um, you know, you can trample with them, like with the Gondor Knights. You can purchase the Forge Blades, Heavy Armor, and the Banakiri Upgrade. The thing what I would love, and you can also purchase the Fighter Upgrade, by the way. Uh, you can, first of all, buy this one here on the, on the Archer Range Level 3. And you can, you know, they are not going to be as strong as, uh, for example, Rangers, obviously, which makes sense. But if you have many of these units on the field, you can still do de decent amount of damage to the enemy pikemen. Okay, Grand Harvest costs 700, which makes us gain 15% more resources from all the farms. Pretty nice. You can also go for the Iron, iron Ore later on. Uh, but first of all, this is gonna hit level 3 over time, guys. You can't upgrade this one... Uh, you know, with money. Like, this This is a structure which is almost like in Battle for Middle Earth 1. It levels up over time. So it's very important to make the marketplace close to your side of the map. This way you can actually keep it alive longer. When Harvest is purchased, the animation is looking a little bit different now. Um, not too much animations for the Grand Harvest. It is like a very small one. You can see that yourself. I think they, they're gonna change still quite a bit. But you can try that patch yourself. Just download that and play with your friends or so solo, like we are doing now in skirmishes. Okay, we have also no opponent, so we don't have to rush anything. Now we will have enough money for Gandalf. And I think I want to take a look into Gandalf before we're gonna end the video. Just want to see how he, how he looks like. We can also go creep here around this side to the work layer. Or to the troll layer at the bottom left side. This map is like a reskin for Forts of Eisen, by the way. It's called Forts of Linduin. Uh, looks much much better to me and I'm actually quite excited about the fact that you know they still care about the graphic changes of this game I'm just only afraid of the more lag possibility because let's be honest I was trying each of the ring my, by myself and I was trying to play with my friends like 2v2s 3v3s it was almost not possible you need to kind of lower your graphic settings to low very low Otherwise, you are getting kicked out of the game very, very fast, and it is not playable because of the huge lags. But we can't blame even the makers of Age of the Ring because I think the game is so old that having the high graphics settings enabled on a game like this can make the game almost unplayable, guys. Okay, Gunsalf is gonna be joining the battlefield very soon. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. Look at the animations when Gandalf is coming, guys. That looks nice, right? <laughs> Gandalf the Grey, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, he has the shield bubble, uh, which you can activate with W, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, the shortcut for that is going to be uh, U. Um, and I like that it shows you that you can also use that one. In Rise of the Witch King, you don't know. Like, there is no tooltip that you have such an ability which you can activate. In Rise of the Witch King, you need to simply know that, otherwise you don't have any, any, anything showing you that this ability actually exists for Rise of the, uh, for Gandalf. Um, it's gonna give you a knockback resistant for 5 seconds, and you will have also a shield which will block damage. We're gonna use the aggressive stance, and go for a wizard blast on this guy. 
The Zaplas is looking like this, so nothing too crazy. The Word of Power animation is looking very dope, so trust me on that one, guys. Let's use the Shield Bubble. It will block the damage. Um, you know, reduce the damage income. He's still being able to damage us, but not that much. And you will see my, you will see yourself now how Gandalf is gonna hit level four after being done with the creep. You can also use the lightning sword. The animation is looking like this. I mean, it looks like in battle for Middle Earth one in Rise of the Witch King. It is a skill shot ability afterwards, after all. Um, and he's hitting level three actually. Okay, I take it back. He's hitting level three, unlike unlike Aragorn who was hitting level four immediately. But level 3 is enough, because they changed this one, because now you can get mounted on, on your Shadow Fax once you are level 3. But you are still Gandalf the Grey, and once you reach level 5, you will be automatically Gandalf the White. But I think the mobility is the most important thing for Gandalf, to be, you know, actively effective on the map. Uh, One-shotting the work, by the way, with uh, Wizard Blast. It's quite low attack speed. Which makes sense because Gandalf is not a melee fighter afterwards, even though he has a crazy damage output. Um, unfortunately, we don't see the damage. We don't see the damage, but you can see, like Anduril Aragorn gains 10% damage and 7% speed. And this is a, some yeah. Look at this. Requires level five. So once Aragorn hits level five, you will be uh, having the Anduril sword, which is something you need to purchase in Battle for Middle Earth one, for example. Here it's gonna be automatically available once you reach level 5. And I think it's gonna be the same situation also for Gandalf. Once you reach level 5, you should be getting Gandalf to white, which will make you stronger. But we don't see that here, unfortunately, unlike with Aragorn. Maybe you need to get level 4 first before you can see that, I don't know. And he's also not dealing too much damage to the Warg Lair. Uh, indeed, both the Wargs respawned by the time Gandalf was able to kill the Lair. <laughs> We can also get dismounted to see if, you know, we might see now, potentially. I want to finish off the rubble first. You don't see that yet. He's going to hit level 4 after being able to kill both the works here. Who's shooting them still? Let's see. If anything is going to be changed. He's level 4 now. And still no change here. And I don't see any anything about him getting stronger once he's level 5. Unlike with Aragorn. But they might still change this one. Okay, uh, Aragorn is gonna hit level 5, uh, again this, this is gonna make him faster and he's gonna have 10% more damage, but it's a passive ability which means it's active all the time. And you can see yourself, we were level 4 after one work layer, and now we killed two work layers afterwards and we could still not get a full level. So leveling up after like, uh, like level 4, level 5, it's gonna be much much harder. Which makes sense for those kind of heroes which have, which have a level 10 ability. Like Aragorn for example, you can summon one battalion of the army of the dead. Gandalf obviously has the Word of Power, which can literally kill everything from your opponent. I'm actually curious about his damage against the Troll. Let's use the Blade Master for this one. Uh, he should be dealing a lot of damage to Troll, right? And he hits him. Actually not. He needs to hit him like four times, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, four times with Blade Master. That means around seven to eight times without the Blade Master. He's level five now. He has the Anduril Sword, um, which means more damage. And you can see yourself, melee damage is 688. Like, Theoden has... Uh, we don't see that for Theoden. And we also don't see that for Aragorn. And that's something I would love to see also. I'm gonna let the guys know. Maybe they can add this one. And the good thing about the patch is... I'm gonna bring you guys to the desktop. Because we can leave now. There is no opening to be, you know, to defeat. I think it's a, it's a nice little change in terms of graphic design. Uh, but the most important thing, in my opinion, is definitely the out of the sync error. Which is not gonna happen anymore. The good thing about the pet switcher now, guys, asking for permission, you have a black screen now, is that it will automatically update this one. So you, when you, once you have this pet, uh, pet switcher, which will allow you to switch between 1.00, 1.06, 1.09, and then the latest 1.09 versions, if they make any changes, it's gonna be available from the update here, if I'm not mistaken. So you don't need to go and download this and that again, you know, and you can simply switch between the patches. One thing you need to know is if you want to play Rise of the Witch King, you need to enable the 1.06. So if I'm going to click on Rise of the Witch King now, you can see it's not going to start. You will get this Mordor Fortress wall up expansion because for some reason it doesn't work with the 1.09. So we're going to switch now to 1.06 and try Rise of the Witch King once again. 
and that will make the game run pretty much as easy as that and if you have any further questions let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about the changes in version 2.0 if you have played this already let me also know in the comment section down below and also let me know if you want to if you want me to make more videos like this in the future and um, maybe tutorial videos which i'm gonna be finishing first for battle for middle earth one i'm excited about the changes we're gonna host a tournament as soon as we possibly can for this scheme i will keep i will you know keep you guys updated in discord and see you next time guys thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves and as always stay beyond standards peace guys